So a little bit about Dr. Sarah Bonha, ND, PhD, before we begin. Her areas of focus include pediatrics, women's health, autoimmune conditions, thyroid issues, digestive, gastrointestinal health, anxiety, mental health, weight management, skin health, and much, much more. Dr. Sarah Bonha is a distinguished naturopathic physician who embarked on her holistic health journey with a solid foundation in Western medicine, first by earning a medical degree in Iran. She then pursued a PhD in Chinese medicine in China, immersing herself in ancient modalities like acupuncture and herbal medicine. Building on this, she expanded her horizons by achieving a doctorate degree in naturopathic medicine at CCNM in Canada. With profound knowledge of both Western and alternative Western medicine, Dr. Sarah Bonha bridges two worlds and gives her a comprehensive approach to healing. She's also fluent in English, Mandarin, and Persian languages and considers it a privilege and strength to communicate with patients in their native language. Dr. Sarah Bonha wishes to support and empower her patients to discover the best version of themselves. As you probably saw from my posts and email, uh, those who are attending this live Zoom are eligible for an exclusive discount um, to see Dr. Sarah Bonha. That's going to be 20% off. It is only for people on this call, and that is for new and existing patients. I'm going to provide information in the chat for you to request a visit if you'd like. Um, I'm really excited to learn more about supplements, and so I'm going to hand it over now, and thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. So welcome to tonight's uh, Zoom talk about supplements. And I hope I can deliver some uh, good and, uh, information about supplements that you can learn from and manage your uh, supplement intake while you're consulting with a naturopath or a healthcare uh, provider. So uh, as you see here, the information here is just for general information and I'm not recommending any of those supplements for any specific patient or person in this group, uh, but I will be happy to be your naturopath physician in future and guide you through the supplements intake. So as a naturopath physician for a couple of years, I have been encountered uh, lots of questions about dietary supplements and what they are, if they need to take it. I have people asking me like, Dr. Sarbono, I'm taking like a variety of like food, fruits, vegetables, protein, healthy fats. Do I still need to get supplements, right? So that would be answered uh, in tonight's talk. Uh, so supplements are coming in different uh, forms. Mostly they are in tablets, capsules, gels, or gummies for children, liquid, powder. Some, some, sometimes they are kind of like as uh, sublingual, which is under the tongue, or they are like drops, or sometimes they are injectable. So this is also very important to choose the best form of that supplements for your health, right? For example, if a person is having a Crohn's disease or inflammatory bowel disease, while the part of the intestine which is needed for B12 absorption is not working, and then I give them B12 uh, through like the tablet form, which is giving, given to patient orally, that's not going to work, right? So I have to choose the best form in order to address their deficiencies and their need, right? I have people that they are taking vitamin D in tablet form and they are having difficulty with increasing the level of vitamin D, right? So then I may decide to go with like sublingual form because the sublingual is like under the tongue. So they put a drop under the tongue and that would help them to absorb that one more rapidly through systemic circulation, just by bypassing the gastrointestinal system. So that's why I said like, it's more important for us to know what form of supplements should be given to patients. And next, we want to talk about the purpose of supplements, like mainly we want to kind of like use them to help bridge the gap when the, there are some deficiencies in our diet, because for sure, not necessarily we are getting everything through diet. For example, like vitamin C, if uh, I have a patient, they say like, I take oranges every day. So do I need to take vitamin C? 
That's perfect. You are getting like um, um, food and fruits like uh, vegetables, citrus fruits for vitamin C. Yes. But then, you know, like the average size orange has about like uh, 50 milligram of um, uh, vitamin C. But you need, for example, 500 milligram vitamin C per day. Right. So that's why I don't recommend to take like 10 oranges in order to get the 500 uh, milligram of the orange of the vitamin C because it has carbohydrates that we don't want to take that much, right? So that's why sometimes for people that they need uh, extra dosage of vitamins or minerals, we need to give them the treatment dose, which is the supplements. Uh, calcium is the other one, right? So for example, people that they are having some bony issues, people that they are having parathyroid issues or calcium deficiencies, then they need to take calcium as a supplement or for example, omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, standard American diet, which we abbreviate that one as SAD diet, which is really sad because uh, the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 is very high, right? And people are not getting enough omega-3 uh, fatty acids. That's why in certain situations, we need to give people omega-3 fatty acids. But again, as a naturopath physician, I have to make sure that there is no interaction between supplements or medications that they are taking because even though this is a supplement, but it can cause some serious uh, consequences. There was a new article published on uh, PubMed talking about omega-3 high dose, which can increase risk of cardiovascular disease, which actually we are giving omega-3 for a benefit of cardiovascular system. But on the other side, if we, if we are providing that one on a higher dose, that may affect like the opposite effect, right? So that's why it's really important to know what dosage, what form, and uh, we are giving to who. Um, some of the special population, like pregnant females, uh, children, elderly, female in general, they are in need of like increased nutritional uh, support, right? So for example, for pregnant female, it's a must to take folic acid, right? And we know folic acid is preventing from a neural tube defect, which is a sort of like birth defect uh, for babies. So that is a must. So if they are taking enough folic acid through diet, that's not sufficient. So we have to supplement that one by supplement. Or for elderly, because of like um, changing in their body position, losing their body mass or muscle proteins, then we need to supplement them with some specific type of nutrient and supplements. So this is kind of like a comparison between the food and supplements, which I kind of, uh, kind of like overview that one already. So uh, when it comes to obtaining nutrients, we have two primary sources. One is food, the other one is supplement. The only exception is for vitamin D that we can get it from sunshine, like the, from sun as well. But the rest is just either through your food or supplements. But the main difference here is I prefer food. Yes, everyone prefers food. But then when we are taking food as a primary source, we are getting enough like proteins, vegetables, fruits, fat, which are providing us like vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. And also we do have a, a term, it's called nutrient synergy, which means like, for example, uh, orange has vitamin C and iron. And everyone probably, you guys know that vitamin C is helping with iron, I mean, the absorption of iron will be improved by vitamin C, right? So that's why most of the iron supplements, they have uh, vitamin C at the side. So this is good that we naturally have those one in food. But as I said, the amount is not sufficient, right? If you want to get enough amount of vitamin C through oranges, you need to take like 15 oranges per day, right? Which is not... Um, uh, good for your health because it's not just vitamin C. It has like lots of carbohydrates that may bother uh, the other systems in the body. And uh, supplements in other sites, they are more concentrated source and they are intended to complement the diet, right? So for example, vitamin D, as I said, so we are taking vitamin D to support bone, 
But now we have, we know vitamin D is not just for supporting the bone. Vitamin D, it has a wide range of activities. Like one of the top one is immunomodulators, right? For many of autoimmune condition, for many of inflammatory conditions, for cancer preventions, for many kind of like um, infections, we need vitamin D. So this is one of the thing that everyone should be on uh, as a supplement. But again, uh, personally, I prefer to check the level of the blood uh, for vitamin D before prescribing because vitamin D is fat soluble, right? So it's a vitamin that excess of that one can cause vitamin toxicity, right? Like uh, hypercalcemia, kidney stone, which we don't want to to see that one, right? But uh, it's kind of like easy to manage. Just check the blood and see where is the level of vitamin D. And based on that one, we can adjust the dose. Probiotics are the other one, which is the good type of bacteria that they are helping to support gut. And we know the gut brain, the gut brain relationship. So that could help even with mood, with anxiety, with sort of like the pathologies that we have for mental health. So probiotics also can be taken from food, but if it's needed to be taken in a higher dose, then supplements are the one that are uh, recommended. Um, so if we are going to address specific deficiencies, right, as I mentioned, like people that they have done a surgery on their stomach, right, and usually they are bec they become B12 deficient or people that they have IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, like ulcerative colitis or Crohn disease, they become B12 deficient. People with celiac disease, they become iron deficient, calcium deficient. What else, like examples I can give you, like there are a lot of med medications, people who are taking medications, they become, they become like deficient in many vitamins and minerals, right? So it's very important for me as a naturopath physician to have a holistic approach and know about their diseases, know about the medication they are taking, put them all together and do some like test to kind of like confirm the deficiencies, not necessarily like a very high level of deficiency, even a small amount of deficiencies can cause some manifestation for patient. Uh, like people who are taking uh, PPI or uh, proton pump inhibitors for stomach acid like omeprazole, they become B12 deficiency after a couple of years, right, of taking that medication. That can increase risk of gastric cancer later on because it's increased, it's decreasing the stomach acid, right? So that's important for me to know the deficiencies and the health need of the patient, right? And based on that one, I can prescribe the supplements as needed. Um, I personally prefer not to throw supplements to the patient, like take the B complex, for example. I prefer to go over the B vitamins and see which one is needed and just prescribe that one. Because even though they are vitamins, but they are extra work for your body, right? So the liver should go over metabolization. I don't want to put more work for the liver, right? So that's why I want to specifically know if you need just B12, just give you B12. If you just need B1, just prescribe B1, not taking B complex, right? Even though B vitamins are uh, water, uh, I mean, soluble, but it's um, if there is no need, why they should be taken, right? So this is one. Convenient, uh, yes, they are more convenient compared to food because you take one tablet done for the day, right? So the whole uh, uh, kind of like dosage that you need to be taken for vitamin C is given by one uh, tablet. We do have uh, supplements that they put everything in one supplement, like all the vitamins or minerals are just taken by one supplement. And uh, they are, there are supplements that they are given for specific conditions, as I said, like omega-3 for uh, cardiovascular. But again, the dose is very important. As I said, a uh, recent article published, they were talking about high dose omega-3 and increased risk of cardiovascular disease. So here are uh, common types of supplements like uh, vitamins that we have. Some vitamins are water soluble. Some vitamins are fat soluble. People that they have pancreas, uh, like pancreatitis or any sort of like pancreas disease, most of the time they have um, 
fat soluble uh, vitamin deficiencies uh, like vitamin K, they may have like bruises, they may get like bleeding easily. Uh, people that they have um, um, digestive enzyme deficiencies, they may get like vitamin deficiencies. So that's important for me to know which vitamins is that water soluble, is that fat soluble, and they are deficient so I can prescribe. Even the type, the, the, uh, even the a form of the supplements that is given to patient is important too. Like, as I said, for vitamin D, I prefer sublingual, which is under the tongue. So usually they comes in a drop and based on the uh, brands or the type of vitamin D, either one drop or two drops should be taken under the tongue. So they can just directly go to systemic circulation and bypass the GI system. So that would be a preferred type of vitamin D intake, for example. It's fat soluble. So vitamin A, D, K, they are fat soluble. So what does it mean? It means that better absorption is happening when they are taken with fatty food. So I have people that they are taking vitamin D every day in the morning, the first thing in the day. This is not really the best time of taking vitamin D. Vitamin, T is vitamin D is best to be taken after breakfast or after lunch, especially after taking fatty food. So usually I tell my patients that if you are having like uh, egg for breakfast, that's a good time to be taken, vitamin D be taken. If you are having salmon for lunch, it's good time to be taken, right? So make sure to have some oil, or if not, nothing, like it's just salad for your lunch, add just like a couple, uh, like two tablespoons of uh, olive oil, and then take your vitamin D after. Uh, many people are taking turmeric as a supplement for anti-inflammation. Turmeric is also fat soluble, so it's better to be taken after fatty food. So these are just helping us to uh, improve the absorption and effectiveness of, my, of supplements. I have people that they are taking supplements, but still they don't get the results, right? Then this is the time I go a little bit deeper to see what is the barrier. Are they taking it in a good form? Are they taking in a best a dose? Are they taking it in a best time? So these are the things that I have to kind of like uh, um, play with to get them to the um, uh, optimal level. For minerals, we do have zinc, magnesium, calcium, iron. To be honest, I have patients, they are coming and they said, I am taking magnesium and I'm asking them why. They said, because I have heard it's good for sleep. And then I'm asking them, what type of magnesium are, are you taking? They say magnesium citrate. So magnesium citrate is not really good for sleep. So, but they have heard that it's good for sleep, right? So magnesium are having a wide uh, different types, like at least uh, if I'm not making mistake, like nine different types of magnesium are, are in the market. Not all of them are good for everyone. Some of them are even contraindicated in, it means like it's not good to be used in some certain conditions. And not all type of magnesium are good for sleep and not all magnesium are good for constipation. So uh, it's better to kind of like consult with a healthcare provider before uh, self-prescribe those supplements. Zinc, I have many people on zinc. And they say zinc is good for immunity. Yes, that is correct. Zinc is good for immunity. But if you take it for long term, it's kind of like immunosuppressor. So it's kind of like suppressing your immune system. So usually people should not take zinc supplement for more than two months, right? So if you are taking zinc supplement, you have to be off of that one for a couple kind of like uh, months and then restart taking it if, if it's really needed. Um, herbs and botanical are the other groups of uh, supplements that we have. Um, I just listed a couple of them here. For example, ginkgo is one of the herbs that many people are taking because they have heard it's good for memory, it's good for circulation, cardiovascular, yes. But then it's important to know that ginkgo is increasing the risk of a stroke, is increasing the risk of bleeding if it's taken with some other Medication like blood thinner, aspirin, fish oil, um, Advil, like those are all uh, thinning the blood. So if a patient is taking those and they don't know that there is an interaction, uh, so if they have like a stroke later on, they don't even know what, what was the cause of the stroke, right? So I'm not saying that ginkgo is causing stroke, no. Ginkgo interaction with medication may increase the risk for stroke. Um, 
Then we do have some specialty supplements, which we uh, recommend this one just based on the need, like uh, probiotics, as I said, glucosamine or fish oil, and um, for uh, different population. Uh, some of the benefits that we have with supplements are preventing the deficiencies and also the chronic disease. So we have people with uh, peptic ulcer disease and they are taking omeprazole, as I said. So as a prophylaxis for uh, prevention of B12 deficiency, I may recommend B12 supplementation. People who are taking statins medications for uh, hyperlipidemia, like high level of cholesterol, like atorvastatin, for example, and they are at risk for CoQ10 deficiency, right? So this is something that I know and I have to be aware of the deficiencies that it may arise from that um, medication. Vitamin D, uh, for people that are low in vitamin D, um, almost everyone, maybe like 90% of my patients are vitamin D deficient, right? So this is kind of like based on uh, blood level, right? They are very low and that's why I recommend them to take vitamin D. And, you know, the level of vitamin D depends on many different factors like the skin color, exposure to sun and many other factors, intake of vitamin D. So we have to work on that one very closely and monitor that one in order to prevent either deficiency or toxicity. Sometimes uh, supplements are given for enhancing the wellness. For example, magnesium for better sleep. Yes, we, need, we may need to give magnesium for better sleep, but as I said, some magnesiums are only able to pass blood brain barriers. So to reach to the brain and cause calmness, relaxation. So not, not necessarily all types of magnesium are good for that. This is very important, like the risk and considerations and safety. Um, usually I tell my patients that um, pre pre try to buy high quality supplements from a reputable sources. Um, I don't recommend buying supplements from a company that company that they are like producing a dairy product. They are having like um, um, home related products, right? So I would like to buy uh, supplements from a professional line, right? Professional line, it means that they are only making supplements and they, they know what they do, right? Because for example, fish oil, it might be contaminated with heavy metals, right? So uh, this is uh, this is too bad because not not we are not getting any benefits, and then on the other sides we are getting get, getting exposure to the uh, heavy metals, right? So this is one, and the other one there was an article actually. And uh, they went over the labeled amount and they checked the actual amount of that uh, ingredients of that um, supplement. And they show that it's not matching what they are uh, saying on the supplement label, right? So for example, for fish oil, they said like two gram of fish oil, but actually there was only like 1200 milligram of fish oil. So that's why I mentioned it's better to go with uh, kind of like a good brand. And uh, the other one is like the interactions, as I said. Interactions are very important. Please take it seriously. And many people, they don't know it. Like even the, the complications when they are happening, they are, they are not aware of like, this is a con interactions between the supplements or between the supplement and medications. For example, one of the uh, very obvious and clear interaction I listed here is between St. John's wort and antidepressant because of the serotonin uh, syndrome. Both they are good for uh, depression and they are working on serotonin uh, neurotransmitter. And when we have too much serotonin, we call it serotonin syndrome and patient needs to go to hospital then, right? So this is something that I always want to um, ask my patient on every single visit. No matter if I saw if I saw them last week or last month or two months ago, I will go over supplements, medication on every single visit because maybe something happened and they went to a physician or ER and they prescribed some medication that I'm not aware of, right? So I want to know if they are taking any new supplement, any, any new medication. Unfortunately, many people, they don't consider supplements as a not a medication, but as a, as something that they should 
tell me to know, right? When I'm asking them, are you taking any supplement or medication? They say no. And then uh, uh, like when they are continue talking about that, they say, oh yes, I'm taking zinc, I'm taking iron, I'm taking magnesium, I'm taking this and that, right? So just be aware, like even though they are supplement, even though they are over the counter, but they are still considered a uh, chemical um, substances that they may interact with some other supplements or medications to uh, you're taking. Uh, moderation is the key. So uh, for all the supplements, like vitamin A, for example, is a vitamin, yes, but you know, too much of vitamin A may cause toxicity. Um, may, maybe you guys uh, have heard about Accutane, which is a medication, high dose vitamin A, which like young ladies, they are taking for acne treatment. And this is kind of like a medication with high dose of vitamin D and it's 100% teratogen. What does it mean? It means 100% it can cause birth defect because it's high dose vitamin A. High dose vitamin A can cause birth defect, right? People know that one, yes, but then they don't know what are the other toxicity signs of high dose vitamin D. Dryness of the hair, hair loss, right? I have had patients who are taking high dose vitamin A for acne and next year they are coming for hair loss. They don't know that Accutane was actually the cause for their hair loss, right? So this, this is what I'm talking about. So we have to make sure the, the level of the supplements that we are taking is in moderate, not too much, not too low based on the individual need. Uh, next part, I just very quickly, I want to go over the timing of the supplements. People are asking, what is the best time to take supplements? For many vitamins or uh, minerals in general, it really doesn't matter when you take those supplements, but vitamin C, as I said, is better to be taken uh, with some um, um, and, and like a water soluble, so with or without food, it's okay. Um, and also it can help the absorption of iron. So if people are taking iron supplements, I kind of like combine that one to be taken, but otherwise it's kind of like um, okay to be taken at any time. Vitamin D, I already mentioned that one. So uh, vitamin D is better to be taken morning or noon because there are some articles showing that vitamin D may interfere with the sleep pattern if taken too late. So that's why I usually recommend taking in the morning or noon with fatty food. So this is for vitamin D. And then we have uh, next one, which is calcium. Calcium is better to be taken with meals because it needs uh, stomach acid to kind of like help to dissolve it and in divided dose because the stomach does not have it. There is a threshold for absorption of calcium. So if you need to take like 1200 calcium per day, don't take more than 600 in one dose because then the, the stomach doesn't absorb that one um, um, on the best uh, dose. Magnesium is better to be taken before bedtime. Uh, yes, especially the magnesium that can um, be used for sleep, insomnia, and relaxation. Uh, it can be taken uh, with or without food. Omega-3 uh, with meals is better because it's absorbed again as a fatty fish, right? It's a fatty uh, oil. So that's <clears throat> better to be absorbed with fat containing meals. B vitamins is better to be taken in the morning because that's also in, uh, increasing your energy and it may interfere with sleep if taken late. Uh, so I usually ask people don't take it after 2 p.m. Probiotics is better to be taken in the morning. I mean, before breakfast uh, or before large meals usually. Iron is better to be taken on empty stomach, but I know many people are having like stomach upset, uh, but the type of like the iron supplements that we prescribe, and uh, they are kind of like the elemental iron, they, there is less uh, chance for constipation or um, gastrointestinal uh, upset. And as I said, vitamin C is increasing that one. So how should we know what supplements we need to take? I need to go over the history of the patient diseases and do some lab tests. And then we, um, this is like kind of like the ideal approach, balanced diet first, supplement as a support as needed and individualized recommendation. 
um, which is um, done by uh, functional testing, uh, history taking, blood tests, urine tests, saliva, genetics, some other tests that we do in order to know what are deficient or what are kind of like a borderline and we need to kind of jump in before the symptoms are coming in. So we put them all together. I tell people like supplements are not magic wand. So it's not if you take supplements, everything will go away. No, you have to eat healthy. You have to do exercise. You have to manage your stress. You have to stay hydrated. You have to get enough uh, sleep, right? In order to be balanced, exercise, physical activity, hydration, and stress management, and most importantly, mindful eating, right? So people should be mindful about the what they eat and what they consume, because that is also affecting their uh, absorption. So in general, uh, supplements, as a conclusion, they can be useful for addressing the specific deficiencies or health concern. Uh, but first, focus on your diet. Second, fo focus on your symptoms and then talk to your healthcare provider to see if you need any uh, supplement, any individualized treatment plan, which matches your symptom the best. So thank you for listening. And uh, I will be happy to answer your question if you have any. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarah Bonha. And folks, if you have any questions, you can feel free to use the hand raise feature, um, or you can also put it in the chat as well. Perfect. IVs. Yes, uh, I do recommend IVs uh, for certain uh, group of population uh, or even I should say like as a boost of the um, system. So you can start with IV first and then switch to uh, supplements. I have had patients that they were not having any changes with oral supplementation. But as soon as we put them on IV, everything got better, right? So because IV is bypassing the GI system, right? It will go directly to systemic circulation. But when you take some supplements through the oral, like the by oral, uh, that should go to the systemic circulation, right? So that may affect the availability of that supplements in circulation. So yes, I will recommend um, Myers cocktail for like a, as a basic one and based on what the patient needs, we can offer the other. Actually at Naya, we do offer IVs. Um, yeah. Um, there is another question. Uh, So what are the other supplements that they are fat soluble? Any um, fat soluble vitamins, they are A, K, E, vitamins A, K, E. And then the other supplements we have is turmeric, fish oil, vitamin D. So, so far, these are the six top one that is in my mind now, but these are the main uh, supplements that they are fat soluble. Um, If someone has low number in iron, IV available. So first of all, we need to know why this iron is low, right? Is that because of iron deficiency anemia? Is that because of low absorption? Is that because of celiac disease, right? But there are uh, IV um, for iron as well. Uh, if you missed the first half of the video, yes, the recording is available. And... Uh, So back to the question for fat soluble, CoQ10 is the other one, which is fat soluble as well. CoQ10 is the other one. And there is a question here, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. So you are asking for taking supplements on a, like a five days and then two days uh, off. 
Um, it can be beneficial in certain situations, right? So it's like letting body to have a rest, right? And then prevent the potential side effect, right? Uh, I may recommend this one for uh, like children or for elderly to minimize the side effect and um, kind of like um, specific supplements. I may consider that one like adaptogens or um, uh, stimulant supplements, but not for everyone, not for every supplement. I hope I answered your question. Um, do you have a prefer particular supplement brand that you prefer? Um, uh, not just one brand, um, we do prescribe through Foliscript, uh, which is a naturoceutical website and they are having the uh, reputable resources for supplements. Uh, I will go over NPI numbers and making sure that they are, uh, having NPI numbers, um, there are many different brands, uh, but to be honest, uh, I don't know if I can name like any specific brands or no. What is the best brand for CoQ10? Liquid. That's a good question. I usually don't prescribe the liquid um, uh, form of CoQ10. I believe pure encapsulation should have one uh, which comes in liquid form. Is this true D should be taken with another vitamin for optimal function? Not with, aha, uh -huh. okay, good question. Uh, vitamin D with another uh, vitamin. Uh, yes, but this is kind of like something new again. Uh, it's better to be taken with vitamin K. So usually I prescribe vitamin D3 and K2 in order to increase the absorption and getting the vitamin D directly into the cells when they where they are needed to do their effect. Yeah. So, but even if like, it's usually more expensive. Uh, so even if people are taking vitamin D by itself, that should be okay too. So vitamin D is in two types. One is D2, the other one is D3. So D3 is the one that we prescribe most of the time. So it's generally preferred due to higher potency and effectiveness in raising the uh, uh, blood level. And there is a question, what are liposomal supplements advantage to them? So it's a, a form of a delivery system, right? So the active ingredients like that, active ingredients of that vitamins or other nutrients are encapsulated in a tiny uh, vesicles, which is called liposomes. And liposomes are made of phospholipids. So the same type of fats, which makes up the cell membrane and it can enhance the absorption. So yes, for some sort of like um, um, supplements, I prefer to give them uh, liposomal supplements. So enhance absorption, better bioavailability and reducing the um, GI side effect. So yes, for some supplements, um, we prescribe that one uh, as a liposomal. And uh, um, are there certain supplements which, which are more toxic for the liver? This is a good question. So yes, there are supplements that they are most toxic to liver, but you know, liver is the main organ of uh, toxic, like the detoxing or metabolizing of the supplements, right? 
I usually say uh, liver looks like a mom, which is busy with like children, um, home, like the chores at home, a lot of like activities. So the liver needs sometimes for itself to take care of liver itself, right? So if you are taking any supplements in dosage that are higher than what is recommended, or if you are taking herbs that we are not too sure about the uh, side effects, then we have to be more careful. But yes, there are uh, vitamin A, uh, which I mentioned that one has a liver toxicity. Vitamin B3 is a high dose of that one, could cause liver damage, green tea extract too much, black cohosh and some of the other uh, like anabolic uh, steroids and um, some of the Chinese medicine herb um, um, that they may increase the toxicity to liver as well. Okay, I hope I answer all the questions that I saw in the chat. Yeah. I don't see any more questions in the chat here. Um, if anyone else, did you answer the question, Dr. Sarabana, about the article you mentioned about fish oil and cardiac problems? No. Did you see that one? No. What was the question? It was, uh, it was great information. What was the article you mentioned about okay, that was in oil public, and cardiac? Talking problems. about fish oil and cardiovascular disease. Um, but they um, concluded that high dose of, vitamin, of uh, fish oil on daily basis for long term may increase risk of cardiovascular disease. Thank you. Yeah. What food do you recommend for increasing iron level? Okay, good question. So first of all, it's important to know what time you take iron and what you take with iron supplementation. Like uh, don't take iron with caffeine or kind of like tea uh, because it may decrease the absorption. Iron is best absorbed with uh, vitamin C. And there are... Um, different sources of iron so there are heme iron sources which is more easily absorbed and like red meat uh, chicken fish uh, organ meats like liver for example and non-heme iron which is less readily absorbed and like legumes tofu uh, leafy green vegetables whole grains uh, but if you uh are okay with uh, organ meats, I recommend like beef uh, liver, which can be uh, have, have a good effect on iron level. Um, so um, Michelle, if you want me to send you the list of the iron sources for vegetarian diet, just uh, should an email to uh, Angela or uh, if you have the email for my uh, patient coordinator, and then I will respond to your email by providing you the list of the food. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarabana, for all the amazing information and everyone for joining. If we don't have any more questions, we are going to go ahead and wrap up tonight. Um, please stay tuned um, for our upcoming talks and just really appreciate everyone joining um, and taking time with us this evening. So Thanks. don't hesitate to reach out. I am going to provide my email address in the chat as well. Um, there we go. So that you have it. As you know, I'm putting a lot of this together. So you can always reach out there. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Angela.